the 8th generation of main series games Pokemon Sword and Shield were just officially announced. With the reveal, we've got a lot of new information, and I'll be going over the most important highlights today. My name is Resonance22, I have a mild cold, and without further ado, let's talk about what's coming next for the franchise. Pokemon Sword and Shield were revealed during the February Pokemon Direct, and both versions will be released on the Nintendo Switch in late 2019. Based off the release dates of prior titles, we can safely assume that this means November. Main series titles are turn-based monster collection RPGs that are highly customizable and feature surprisingly deep strategic combat. The single player is always an entertaining RPG adventure with very approachable mechanics, and the multiplayer, for those curious, involves creative team building, mind games, and a complex evolving metagame to explore. I have plenty of battle analysis videos on my channel if you're interested, links to those below, as well as many tutorials. With every generation, they make competitive team building easier to get into, and since Gen 6, the single player does not require any grinding for experience, so there really hasn't been a better time to jump in than now. The next generation is defined by its new Pokémon, brand new region, and new features. These are always an exciting time for both fans and newcomers alike. Each generation always comes with new Pokemon, usually ranging from 72 to 156, not counting Mega Evolutions or Regional Forms, since those aren't separate Pokedex entries. I think it's safe to expect something on the lower end, since Pokemon Black and White has been the only entry so far that focused entirely on region-exclusive Pokemon until the post-game. All other main series games have been a mix of new and old, and it's already confirmed that Pokemon Sword and Shield will follow that tradition. If you're concerned about having to learn all the Pokemon, don't worry because every recent game has narrowed down the Pokedex to a regional dex first, which keeps things approachable. In the trailer, we can see a player encounter the following Pokemon. A Pikachu, Mincino, Hootoot, Grubbin, Wishiwashi, Zuelus, Flygon, Braviary, Whalmer, Meowstic, Lucario, Tyranitar, and Munchlax. This confirms that each of those species will be present in the game, as well as their associated evolutions. Personally, I'm a big fan of Flygon and Meowstic, and I think that all of these will make for quite a diverse region, even if it's just a teaser. We also got three brand new Pokémon revealed, the starters for this generation that players get to pick at the very beginning. The trailer showcased Scorbunny, the fire type, Sobble, the water type, and Grookey, the grass type. Let me know in the comments below which starter you like the best in Sword and Shield. Everyone has their own personal preference with these, and in my case, I usually go with the water type, and I absolutely adore Sobble. I think that these starters have a lot of personality, and I like them all. The three starters are intended to introduce players to the complex type matchups of the game. Pokemon can be either one or two types, and their associated moves can be only one type. As of Gen 7, there are 18 different types, and they each have their own unique set of strengths and weaknesses. For returning fans, the new types introduced since Gen 1 have been Dark, Steel, and Fairy type. It's not known yet what combinations the new starters will evolve into, but you can expect me to update you with that information on my Twitter, Facebook, and here on YouTube. If I had to guess, Scorbunny might become a fire and electric type, which is good because I'll take anything that's not firefighting. For me, taking a look at the new region is just as interesting, since I really enjoy both the single player and multiplayer aspects of the game. In the trailer, we got to see a surprisingly comprehensive look at the new Galar region. This area takes inspiration from the United Kingdom, and thematically, there seems to be an emphasis on both nature and industry. The trailer begins with a scrolling shot of Route 1, the first route that players will travel down during the game. In the background we can see a bridge, a train station, a Pokemon Center, and an elaborate purple building. Considering all the train stations that dot the map, it is likely that the trains play some sort of important role. Maybe they will be similar to the Battle Subway in Gen 5, or simply serve as a means of transportation between the many segmented subregions before the player has the ability to fly. Taking a look at the world map shows us that a mountain range separates the early farms 
from the sprawling Lake Meadow just north of it. Each of these areas looks packed with content, and seems to allow for more open exploration. For example, the lake area has many branching paths and is very open. Players can also return here later with Surf to reach the island in the middle of the lake. There's even a castle tower there, which you're welcome to theorycraft on. There are train tracks all over the map, and these seem to connect the fully explorable industrial city to the surrounding towns. It's important to note though that the map is more stylized than the game itself, so we can expect that there are a lot of details that are intentionally left out. There will be far more to see than what is actually shown on the map, and we know this because the trailer already shows that. The next section shows us a clip of the player's house, which is dotted with interesting looking plants. Inside the house, the first thing of note is the player's backpack, which is absolutely huge this time. Whether or not that's a stylistic choice, or is reflected in the gameplay, remains to be seen. Now we have a better idea of where the player is supposedly storing several fishing rods, two full bicycles, and 300 potions. We also get a good look at both the male and female characters' outfits. Personally, I'm a fan. The style choices are excellent this time. The following clips go by really quickly, but we do see a snapshot of another elaborate purple building, but this one is situated by a lake. It also has a Pokemon battling arena next to it. Then there's a short clip of a foggy forest, which I assume is the woods to the left of the player's house. The scenery shots are quite varied, and a joy to look at. Around 30 seconds into the trailer, we can see the female trainer sneaking in some tall grass, so perhaps this signifies the return of the Dex Nav feature from Gen 6. This clip also confirms that Sword and Shield will make a return to the traditional style of wild encounters. And inside this tall grass lies the biggest reveal of them all, Pikachu confirmed in Gen 8. The player then sends out a Mincino, an adorable normal type Pokemon from Gen 5. While the textures on the ground are a tad blurry when closely zoomed in, and I have noticed that the shadows are of a similarly low quality to Pokemon Let's Go, the battle scenes are still honestly stunning. Everything just looks so much cleaner this time, and I appreciate the return to the more realistic proportions that we saw in Pokemon Sun and Moon. The graphic style is quite nice. I think the most important part to note is just how detailed the backgrounds finally are. You can see everything here. It then cuts to the male trainer catching a wishy-washy from Gen 7 in some sort of icy biome. Notably, the player is battling on a sandbank, so I assume that he surfed there. It's safe to imagine that clunky HMs will be replaced with a mechanic that does not take up a move slot, similar to rideable Pokemon. After that, it cuts to a trainer encounter where we get to see a glimpse of the new trainer encounter screen. This has been an iconic part of every Pokemon game, and I love the new direction. It looks great. The trailer then shows tidbits of several battle sequences, but this one I want to focus on is Lucario vs. Tyranitar scene. Look at how packed the stadium is. These large stadiums appear to be a point of interest for the player, and are perhaps one of the new mechanics unique to Sword and Shield. Some have speculated that the audience may play a role in these battles somehow, there are then a few more clips of some truly vibrant landscapes, showing a snowy city and a very colorful mine. I love how detailed the environments are this time around. It feels like a lot of polish has gone into every area. I do wonder if players will be able to interact with these bright gems, perhaps like in the underground in Gen 4. That was one of my favorite parts of Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum, so I hope that a similar idea makes a return here. I assume that these mines will be a way for players to collect evolutionary stones, shards, and other items. Then at about 50 seconds in, we see a brief snapshot of a hillside with what I'm going to assume is a heavily stylized depiction of one of this game's legendary Pokemon. What do you think that this represents? I'm curious what everyone's thoughts are. Next, after a couple panning shots, we cut to the final clip of the Galar region trailer. The male trainer is seen wearing a sports outfit and walking into a colossal stadium. Notably, the number on his back is 227, which I believe is a reference to February 27th, the anniversary of Pokemon. I don't think that they would put this shot in the trailer, 
if these stadiums weren't somehow a significant part of the game. I'm not sure yet what role they serve, but it's possible that they are either a twist on the Pokemon Gym formula, or they offer a new variant on the battle system. It might even be both. The stadium icon is seen not only on the player's outfit, but also in the Japanese logo for the games, which historically has teased the Mega Evolution mechanic in Gen 6 and the Z-Move mechanic in Gen 7. There's one thing for certain though, these stadiums will be a centerpiece of Sword and Shield. So overall, my thoughts on Pokemon Sword and Shield are that it looks very promising. I'm really pleased with how detailed the games look, and also how much information that we got in this reveal. Last time, we only got the names of Pokemon Sun and Moon and a wireframe of Picky Pack, but this time, we get a very comprehensive look at the Gala region, the three starters, and some tidbits of possible new mechanics. I love how varied the Gala region is. It features rural farmlands, sprawling mountain ranges, urban cities, desert canyons, dense forests, and a frozen northern biome. It just looks so fun to explore, and the best part is, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. As far as my expectations go, I was hoping for a few things. One, I wanted to see if the Gala region was going to take advantage of the Switch's powerful hardware, and it really seems to. This is by far the most immersive region yet. My only minor disappointments so far, and take these with a grain of salt because the footage is definitely not final, are the occasional low-res texture, and to a lesser degree, the kind of static animations. I mean, nothing can be quite as stiff as Pokemon Let's Go, having trainers just spin around, but these animations are not quite as lively as the ones in Pokemon Stadium, Colosseum, and Battle Revolution. Now, all that being said, I still think the game looks extremely polished, and the new move particles and battle backgrounds are quite impressive. I don't know if I expected Pokemon level textures for the Pokemon, and honestly, I think I like this style the more I think about it. I also wanted to see if Pokemon would be making a return to the main series mechanics that veterans will appreciate, and they confirmed in the direct that this would be the case. To some, that may be the return of gym battles, even though I did like the totem encounters. I'd appreciate a few more interesting boss fights like those, that feature and require more strategy. I do have high hopes though, as if you take a look at the map, there's actually a stadium near the top that does not have a type symbol on it. Maybe there we will encounter trainers that specialize in a specific strategy rather than a type. The Cypher admin battles in Pokemon Coliseum were really enjoyable for that reason, and it remains as one of my favorite Pokemon games to this day. For me though, the most important return will likely be held items and abilities, as well as new ones for each, and better multiplayer features. In retrospect, these are far more important to the game than I thought. Maybe that's because I purposely use underleveled weird teams or do a lot of Nuzlocke runs, but they just add a lot of necessary depth in general. While I did enjoy Pokemon Let's Go far more than I expected, I found the lack of abilities and lower than average difficulty curve to be a bit disappointing. I actually do like the concept of Let's Go, especially the overworld Pokemon, but Kanto's limited variety in species and types of environments somewhat hindered my exploration. Sword and Shield seems to have a lot more content to it. I have so many fond memories of Pokemon, from building my first collection of the original cards, to catching my first shiny Weedle in Pokemon Silver, and doing countless Link battles in Gen 3 and 4. It was and remains such an essential part of my life. The world is always so immersive. I've never missed out in a midnight release, and this will be no different. I hope that many of you join me later this year. There's a lot to see in Sword and Shield. I decided to make this video because it's always way harder than it should be to get a proper look at the trailer, and some thoughts on it due to all the clickbait out there. Whenever I make a video, it's always based on the idea of, is this something that I would want to watch? I also choose topics based off questions or suggestions that I get in the comments or on Twitter. So if you enjoyed watching this overview, then feel free to subscribe for more content in a similar style, and I have plenty of other Pokemon videos at the end and in the video description below. As always, thank you so much for the support, especially on Patreon, and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. Thanks for watching.